Hi, this is Ram with Better Tattooing. Today, we're talking about whip shading, or at least what you think is whip shading. It may be different than what I think is whip shading. All right. All right, now that's over with. Whip shading. So, I have, I have, I have been spending time on the great internets. I'm watching some YouTube and some social media stuff, which I don't do very often. Like I go through a spurt, maybe I'll watch it for a couple weeks or something like that. And I just get sick and tired of it because it makes my brain hurt. And uh, I use my phone, I always have it on black and white. I'll pull it up here. So it's in black and white mode. So like if you're looking at my stuff, like everything is always in black and white. I know everyone's gonna be like, why do you do that? Because I don't like burning out the stuff in my eyes. Uh, by having, you know, 10 billion colors being shoved into them. As an artist, I like to be able to see life the way it is, instead of hyper-realistic. That's just me. There's some science behind that. Maybe we can talk about that later. Anyways, in doing so, spending time on these things, I've noticed people using the term whip shading. And whip shading is actually, it's a technique. <laughs> and it's not technique, not a result. Um, I see a lot of people doing stuff and they're like, okay, I'm gonna whip shade this. And they do this, or they do this. And they're like pulling things, or they're side swiping, or they're full packing. And what they're doing is they're looking for a result. And what they're looking for is dots that are getting darker to lighter as they move away. Now, that's fine. This is like some people call it stipple shading, which stipple shading is also not whip shading. <laughs> so let's, let's get to the bottom of what whip shading is. We'll see if you're actually doing that right. As a technique, whip shading is a space where you take your needle and you put it perpendicular with the skin, right? And with a single motion, you whip your hand forward where the needle is going to increase it's pigment at the saturation and size of the beginning, and it trails off creating a gap, right? The idea is, is that you're moving your hand faster than the machine can come down, so you're creating an even space and gap of saturation that slowly moves out of the skin. It creates a very nice dot effect, right? You usually start pretty deep, almost blow that stuff out, depending on how fast you're moving. Some people will say you start flat, some people say you start behind, but the idea is, is that you're whipping your hand out. Right? You can whip in too. Some people can. I knew this dude John who could, and it was really funny. It's not not you, John. If you watch these, it's not you. It's this old dude like I seen back in friggin' Toronto, like way, way, way back when. And um, it's funny because like people will be like, I'm whip shading, and they're not. <laughs> so what are the different types of shading that we see? Whip shading. Whip shading is where you like whip your hand out. Cool, right? It makes sense. You're making that, that whippy sound. It's quick, it's a flick. It's also known as flick shading, actually. I'm gonna whip and flick. That's two different effects. Um, more often than not, what I see people doing, and they call whip shading as the result, is they're doing drag shading. Drag shading is dragging your hand backwards, right? And it's in a slow, consistent pace. There's not some type of acceleration that moves off. It's very, very slow. And what you're doing is, if your hand is normally moving in one direction, right? My hand is moving this way, right? But I'm pulling this way. So if I'm moving forward and I'm pulling back, this is another shading technique. What, what does drag shading do? It decreases the amount of pigment that goes into the skin. It's a really simple way. Like if I'm, if my tube tip at the needles is moving forward and I'm pushing into it, we're pushing pigment into the skin. If we start dragging it backwards, we get a pigment dump and the needle is technically skipping over the skin. It won't get as deep of a penetration depending on the stretch that you're using. And usually what you're gonna end up getting is kind of the same type of whip shading effect, depending on how fast you move your hand, but it's also going to be lighter. So this is one of those, it's actually a smooth shading technique using drag shading to create softer edges 
after going against the hard edge. And the art one, I think we've got another thing on hard and soft edges. I'll put it up there. Where you have a hard edge that's moving off like in portraiture or something. I may have like an edge on a nose or something I'm going to be shading off into a cheek. I'll use drag shading by planting my needle and pulling back to lightly feather that out, creating some type of uh, appearance of a contour or something like that, right? So drag shading is not whip shading. Uh, I guess we have room for one more. And uh, man, it's cold out today. I apologize, my hands are freezing. I should have worn gloveys out here. And I should be able to write an A and not double G's. Um, last shading that I see a lot of people doing is, and this is scupping, uh, scupping scup shading and this is where your hand just kind of like stays relatively fixed but you use your wrist to create kind of like a wibble wobble motion as you're moving in one direction normally you're drag shading while you do this to keep things relatively light but you can scup forward uh, when you do this this is all just straight for soft edges right uh, and if you're, if you're using that scupping motion, usually what happens, so your wrist is really fixed and you're using your elbow to pivot your arm. So you have a good stretch and you're just using your elbow versus your wrist. And any of the edges, especially if you're using like a mag, this is really great if you have a bit of a, a pivot on it, like one side you're about 45 degree in, you'll end up with something that's really solidly saturated but still has some breaks in it. So when it heals out three to five years down, it becomes very, very, very soft and it ends up lifting and creating a lighter tone as it moves off of it, depending on how your hand goes. Um, it, you use this a lot in stuff like, I mean, Biomech, like almost entirely is done with like some type of scupping. Uh, a lot of realism and even some of the neo -trad stuff if you're trying to do like an overlay of one color versus the other they use scupping all the time i have seen people scup and call it whip shading <laughs> not that and i don't know if i'm just being like old now or something right but these things are all very different and they all end up with a very 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 different outcome like that's why you have to learn these techniques when you're going through an apprenticeship or i guess watching youtube because each one of them can be used in a different space and, they, and it makes the tattoos a lot easier. When you're going through almost like you're like learning music or playing the drums, you're trying to identify sections and then create these little spaces, the pockets inside of it. We're going to be using fundamentals to fill in that space, right? And if you know like this is a flick on here, that's line work, this is scupped, you know, this is a full fill, this is back shaded, this is, you know, blended, this is that, then all you're doing is breaking it down numerically about how you would actually fill that tattoo in and replicate it to something else. So it expands your ability to do more styles. When people think about style, you're thinking about creating something before it's a tattoo. And that's fine, you know, like if your raw art is like that, it's fantastic. But if you don't have the fundamentals to then put it onto the skin by knowing how these things are going to heal out and look three to five years from now, you're not going to be able to do it. So calling everything whip shading is wrong. <laughs> so if you're doing that, please stop. Please. Please. Anyways, that's from some old guy to you. That's it. I don't know where I put that cap. Anyways, that's Ryan from Better Tattoo, and I'm, I'm leaving now. If you like this, leave a comment on something. Tell me I'm full of it. I don't care. I think it's funny. People are like, uh, and I'm like, ah, fuck you. Block. Uh, if you do like, like, tell me if you're doing this right. If you're doing it wrong, if you want to like list off some other techniques that you know, but don't explain how to do them. Let's see who can come up with the most crazy one. And I just make it up. I don't care. Put in the comment just like, oh, I use, you know, baking soda the technique. It's just whatever. I said that because there's baking soda right there. Um, that's it. Yeah, buy a shirt. We'll talk to you later. I'm Brian. Bye. bye. <laughs>